Wherever I went, angels and people were around, sometimes just a few, sometimes large groups. All were standing around talking with great joy and worshiping. At times they were laughing with hilarious joy, evidently over a loved one coming home or a promise that had come to pass. And they were always talking about Jesus. I can still see him going here and there among the people. There was an auditorium that was an announcement center. The Lord himself was on stage. He was with me, and I could look down and see him as he was with groups of people walking through the air. He was in heaven, and in heaven there is only Jesus, and he is omnipresent. And instantly, at the right moment, he was on the stage of the auditorium. It might have seated ten million people. I looked, and he was there always, and right now. The stage was beautiful. There was a throne chair on it, and I believe that was where Jesus was sitting before he suddenly stood. There was no pulpit, but there was an area that was both gold and silver and had precious jewels. There was a fragrance, an aroma that was indescribable and beyond measure, the fragrance of God himself. And I saw the tidal wave, the last great move of God. It was seven tiers tall. Prophetically, I was told seven signs. One, the last great move of God will be in out-of-the-way places, day and night. Two, signs and wonders will increase and be fought against. Three, laws of physics will be suspended so the miraculous can flow. Four, laws of time and space will be made known to men. 5. Knowledge of men shall increase and never be based on fleshly things. 6. Sevenfold tidal wave, the last great move of God breaking on the shores of eternity. The greatest part will be poured out in rural areas. I seek my bride in humble places. I was born in a stable. 7. Awareness is given my people in days and weeks just before my return. Mass multitudes will be involved. The revival will be through people who give all praise to the Lord. It is coming to root out and destroy the phony. It will keep the faithful, and it will be the introduction to the coming of Christ. I saw Abraham's amphitheater. It was like a football arena, only hundreds of times larger. In it, was a cloud in the playing field. In the cloud, I could see all the promises that have come to pass for and because of Abraham. The promises were to us and the entire world, not just the Jews. There were two, three million seats with names on them. People had specific promises, promises related to David's throne and the lineage of kings. Each of the patriarchs had an amphitheater. The angels helped people remember the promises. On the way to the throne, there was the amphitheater of David. It was a prayer center. Angels were traveling in and out of the archway at the speed of light. Going through the archway was going into the presence of God. The angels were carrying golden censers that carried prayers. They held them by the bowl of the censer. The prayers are precious cargo and are treated as such. No prayer goes unanswered, even wrong prayer. The prayers are brought before the face of God. Instantly, the angels go back for more. I saw at least 70 classes of angels. I first became aware of just how many there were when I was walking along the golden pathway and smelled the fragrance that renewed my strength. I noticed more and more angels of every description and I believe every rank. They were busy with the people and were everywhere and were beautiful. Some were in groups. Others were by themselves. All were busy doing the business of heaven. As they did their business, they would stop every few feet and bow their heads, giving silent praise and worship to God. But I noticed something. There is no such thing as tomorrow and no such thing as yesterday. It was and is always right now. I asked one of the angels how time is measured in heaven. He looked at me with a puzzled look on his face. He said, You mean time as you know it? Yes. 
He continued, Time here is not measured in such trivial things as years, but in ages, where the glory of God rolls forever. That settled that subject in a big hurry. The angels took on a new meaning to me. The classes of angels look like they are family members. Some wore shirts with drawstrings. Some wore pants. Some had shoes. Their hair was never longer than their ear. None had shaved heads, but some had beards. They looked like they were twenty-eight, thirty human years old. I saw some angels that were twelve, fifteen feet tall and as wide as four or five of the biggest linebackers on any NFL team. Some had swords. Some did not. But the angels I saw were huge. I was told that they were warfaring angels on their way to do battle. I saw what I call the armies of God. I was taken to a very large area that wasn't in the city. I was in the air and looked down on possibly hundreds of thousands of angels lined up in ranks and in units. They were God's warfaring angels, and they would leave and come down and fight battles for us. Then they would go back and stand in formation until they were needed again. Some of them had swords that were 15 feet long and on fire. The swords looked like they were of flaming material. Some of them were clothed with the power to move the earth. Others were clothed with the power to bring judgment. But they all had power to defend and to keep God's children. I looked down and I said, Look at those mighty angels. The angel standing with me stood at attention and said, Behold, the warfaring angels of God. They are mighty to the pulling down of the strongholds of the evil one. I noticed all their hands were clothed with power, and I asked, Why are their hands aflame? I was told that they were ready at any moment to come and do battle against the powers of the devil that assail against us. My angel companion to my right said, I have brought you here to observe this portion of heaven. He said no more, and he wasn't going to. The angel on the left, who said very little, bowed his head in deep respect and adoration and began to praise the Lord. I fell silent. I just wanted to do the same thing. Immediately in front of me was the largest castle I could ever imagine. It was suspended in the air, many thousands of feet above ground. There were mountains all around, and it was the most beautiful castle imaginable. And it was totally crystal clear. You could see right through it. From the outside, you could not see any people, and yet on the inside, there were thousands. The castle was miles high and miles in all directions. And when I went through the massive gates, then I saw all the people. It was full of people. Inside, there were great rooms of books, and thousands of angels were tending the books. The people seemed to be heavenly beings that took care of the business of the castle. There were three diadem trees growing in the courtyard. They were smaller than the ones I first saw, but each was just as splendid. The angel said, Remember this and we were gone. There is a meaning for the castle. I didn't know until later what it was about. Later, the Lord took me aside and talked to me. He said, Remember the crystal castle in the sky? This is the place where the hopes and the dreams of my people are kept and fulfilled. From this point, that is where God keeps those hopes and dreams that He wants to fulfill in our lives. Instantly, we were there. From the moment I got here, I just knew everything in heaven flowed into and out of the throne of God. It pulsed like a dynamo. Everything is drawn to the throne. Everything cycles around the throne of God. The throne building was huge, beyond my ability to understand. It is the biggest building in heaven. It was several hundred miles wide and at least fifty miles tall. And it had a domed roof. There were living statues with flames coming out of them. There were columns 30, 35 feet across. There were thousands of steps going up to it. The exact number, I don't know, but I do know that each step was significant and prophetic. As we began to go up the stairway, there were tens of thousands or, or millions of people going into the throne and coming out. They were worshiping and praising God. One said, 
He is all I thought he was, and much more. I heard someone else say, I just want to go back so bad. They were answered with, When God's time is right, you will be back here. A thousand steps up, every step had a purpose. The closer I got, the more magnificent everything became. Proximity causes physical things to become more and more splendid. Something was done to me to be able to withstand the presence of God. The entry area, or gateway, had columns. There were more columns that looked like a thousand feet across and tremendously tall. They were in the doorway leading into the throne. Suddenly, we were through the columns. There were millions multiplied by millions of people prostrate on their faces towards the throne of God. The throne faces every direction at the same time and was 25 miles tall. From any part of heaven, you can see the throne of God. The throne was off in the distance quite far away, but even at this distance, the angels were very contrite and in deep repose. They were in awe and were prostrating themselves. I found myself on my face before God. All I wanted to do was worship and praise Him. The throne was made out of some heavenly material, and it was crystal clear, yet it was some type of stone that was gold and ivory and silver and precious gems and jewels, all sparkling. It gave off what looked like light rays that came out of the material it was made of, and great waves of glory swept through it, liquid fire going through the building material. The building gave off rays of glory. Something had happened to my eyes, and I was able to look at the things of God, or else they would have been too brilliant for my natural eyes. From this distance, I could tell that there was a being on the throne, but he was covered with a cloud of glory that radiated from him, an all-consuming, enfolding fire that was the glory of God himself. He dwelt in a fire of glory. The fire must have been the same thing Moses saw in the burning bush. Whatever it is, it surrounded the being on the throne. I could tell that there was a being in the fire, and I could tell there was a throne, and I could tell he was looking at me. I felt like a grain of sand on the seashore. I wanted to crawl under people. I was actually in the presence of Almighty God. Such reverential fear fell upon me, not a dread, but a reverential fear of actually being in the presence of Almighty God. Unbelievable. That fear fell on everybody as they got closer and closer to the throne. I could not stand. Nobody could. Thousands upon thousands of people were going in and out. There were millions of people around the throne worshiping God. Some were in deep contrition. Some were standing. But most were lying on their face before God, thanking Him for what He had done for them. Inside were seven big pillars, and then there were nine pillars of a substance near to God. There is an inner court surrounded by pillars, and a pavement area with millions of people laying prostrate, some on their backs, all facing the throne. The pavement was like the pavement Jesus stood on with a hundred thousand acres of inlaid jewels. The temple had a foundation, but I was not allowed to know more. I got closer to the throne. There was an area with a railing. Actually, there were three levels of railings. Humans are not allowed beyond them. The railings are made out of gold and some other kind of material that radiated the glory of God and may be the same as the glory of God. Angels stood at the railings. Around the area were stones that were on fire. Living stones, shaped like a potato, gave off blue and amber Shekinah glory. They were from the altar of God and roughly two feet in diameter. They looked like they were coals from the altar of God and on each one of them was a name. My name was on one of the coals before the altar of God. Again, I was instantly on my face before God. All I wanted to do for all eternity was give glory, honor, and praise to God. The feeling is multiplied millions of times over, stronger and stronger, but it's the same as now when I am in deep prayer and seeking God. You don't want to come out.